Hello, this is Justin from the Tech Train here, and I wanted to show you in this tutorial how to make this animated postcard image effect. Let me show you how it looks in PowerPoint itself. So once we start the animation, the image which we're recreating is compiled from all these separate postcards which overlap but create a complete image. Here's another example here. Again, each postcard separately flies in. There's overlap between them, uh, but eventually you create the actual image so all the postcards connect up. Uh, you can, if you prefer, have this effect without the white border so that you end up with the full image displayed uh, in completely smooth uh, separate panels like this uh, so that the complete image is pulled together. It's an interesting effect. Uh, it looks nice. Uh, it can be used in a variety of ways, whether it be uh, a guess the image game in a classroom uh, or just simply a way of making an image appear more attractive. So let's see how we do this. So the first step is to add the picture that I want to appear as the background to the first slide. So I'm going to right click on this blank slide and choose Format Background. I'm going to now change the background to Picture or Texture Fill and then click on File to choose the picture that I want to appear. So this picture now is the one which will appear. At the moment, of course, it's fairly obvious it's already there, so we need to cover it. And you'll notice that in the examples I showed earlier, I have this sort of gradient background at the back, which sort of make, blends with the colors of the picture itself. So I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, and then just add a simple rectangle. I don't want the outline visible, so I'm going to click on Shape Outline and choose No Outline. And then I'm going to bring this, in fact, actually before I resize it, I'm gonna color the gradient. Uh, but I'm going to pick some colors from this background to do that. So what I'm going to do uh, with this, uh, let's close that panel so you can see how I would do this. So with the rectangle selected, I'm going to come up to the Drawing Tools toolbar, which appears at the top when we're clicking on the shape, not there otherwise. So click on the shape, Drawing Tools, and then in Shape Fill, I'm going to choose Gradient. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom of that and choose More Gradients. So now I've got the format shape panel on the right hand side um, and I can just select gradient on the right here. Now I'm going to choose a radial gradient which goes from the center out. So I'm going to choose that type of gradient there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to have uh, three color stops in this. Uh, so I'm going to click somewhere to add a third color stop. And I'm going to have black on the outside uh, then I click on the middle tab here and click on the eyedropper to pick up a color. I think I'm going to go for, I think I'll pick out the greens actually, so a, a fairly dark green from there. And then click on this tab at the end, click on the color dropper again and choose a lighter color, something like that perhaps. There we go. And I can just move that out a little bit just to make that a slightly lighter color. There we are. So that's going to be my background, which I'm going to snap up into the top left corner and then drag out to fill the whole slide. So now we can't see the picture and we're going to be revealing that picture through a variety of shapes. Now, of course, what shapes you use is entirely up to you. For my example, I've used simple rectangles here, which make it look as though they're postcards, especially with this uh, white border here, uh, which I've done for this one as well. Uh, for this one, I chose no border, so you can see these individual pictures are there, um, but there's just no border between them. I'll show you how to do both, both options. Uh, but for this one, I'm going to simply use a straightforward rectangle again. So I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, and then choose the rectangle. Draw a rectangle out. There we are, something like that will do. And now what I can do is change the border of this. So I'm going to choose Shape Outline and I'm going to choose a white outline and then I'm going to come down to weight and six might be fine but if I want a little bit more than six I'll need to click on more lines that'll open up the format shape pattern on the right hand side a uh, panel not pattern sorry 
and I can just increase the width here where it says uh, line width. Increase that a little bit, something like that. There we go. So now what I need to do is fill this shape with the background image that's at the back behind this green panel here. So I need to fill this with whatever part of the background picture is actually behind this little square, wherever this square happens to be. I hope that makes sense. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close that format shape panel on the right hand side again, just so you can see this from scratch. So clicking on this rectangle up to the drawing tools toolbar at the top, shape fill, um, and then we're going to come down to um, let's choose more fill colors. No, that won't bring up the panel. Sorry. Let's just go down to more gradients for the moment and let's open up the format shape. Now we don't want gradient this time. We don't want picture either this time. What we want is slide background fill. And what this will do when I click it is reveal the background of the slide. So effectively it's a window through this green shape at the back. So you see if I pull that green shape away, uh, what we're looking at is, if I can move that across, uh, we're looking at the slide background through this shape. But if I move this shape around, uh, you'll see that once I finish moving it, again, it just reveals whatever is behind the shapes, whatever is at the background of the slide. So now, once we've got that first shape set up, wherever I drag this, I can see through. It's like a window through the shape behind it. Uh, so now what I can do is rotate that shape bring it up a little bit perhaps there. And then by holding control down on my keyboard, I can click and drag this shape and create a duplicate copy of it. And you'll see the same thing happens. It's a window through this green background uh, so that I can see the image behind. And by just making multiple copies, each time I'm holding down the control key and just clicking and dragging, I create this sort of mosaic of postcard images uh, which reveal the background image. Now that itself might be all you want to do uh, to create that kind of image that uh, you can then put some text or titles around them. It's a nice effect just as it is. Uh, but what if you want to animate those postcards? Well, what I would do is this. Uh, first of all, I'd click on the animations panel at the top and then open up the animation pane. Now, what I would also do for this is I'd click on Home and then click on Select on the right hand side and open up the Selection pane. So I have a couple of panes here. Now, the reason is this, uh, that if these postcards are going to fly in, it makes sense that the one at the back is the one that's going to come in first and the other postcards will sort of land on top of it. So it would be a bit odd if, uh, for example, uh, this postcard flew in first and then this one flew in afterwards and somehow managed to tuck itself underneath this postcard. It wouldn't look quite right. So in order to do this in order, what I'm going to do is look at the selection panel here and this shows me all the different objects in my slide. Now they all appear to be rectangles but of course rectangle one is the green rectangle behind these postcards. I don't want to reveal that. So rectangle two is the first postcard and this list here is a vertical list, if you like, of the order in which the items appear. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the one at the top is the one at the very front and the one at the bottom is the one at the very back, which is why rectangle one, which is the green rectangle, is at the bottom of this list. So if you imagine looking down on this list, um, rectangle seven is the one that will be nearest you at the top. Um, I can rearrange these. I can drag these postcards around a little bit uh, so that now they're not in the same order. So it's not one, two, three, four, five, six. So you see now they're a little bit more um, sort of random as it were. There we are. Doesn't really matter if we have a little gap in the middle there. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is click on, it's rectangle five now, which is the bottommost postcard. And then I can um, simply choose in the animations panel there to add an animation. 
uh, I think I'm going to choose grow and turn. There we are. Something like that. Or should we have fly in? So fly in and do them at different uh, angles, shall we? So it's rectangle five. Uh, then rectangle seven will be the one that's in front of that one. So I'm going to click on rectangle seven and then add my fly in. But this time, uh, maybe do it from the right. Uh, from bottom right, perhaps. There we are. Then rectangle three, which is the one that's in front of that. So again, we'll choose fly in. Have that one, I think, coming from the top. Rectangle four, this one on the right. So we'll add fly in and have that coming from the top right. And then rectangle four, oh, that was rectangle four, rather rectangle two, uh, which will fly in from the top left. And then finally rectangle six, which will come from the bottom. So fly in from the bottom. There we are, it's already doing that. So now if we have a look at that uh, animation, we can see that the postcards fly in and each one lands on top of the ones that are already there. So we've done them in the right order. Now with the animation pane open on the right hand side, at the moment we can see each of these animations uh, occurs once you click and you probably don't want to do that. So what I would do is maybe have the first animation as a click so that you can start that uh, animation whenever you want. Uh, but then the other animations are going to click on the first one, hold shift down and then click on the last one. So I'm selecting all of those animations and I'm now going to change start from on click to after previous. And it puts a very slight uh, duration in each one. I think it's about 0.5 of a second. So each one of these animations lasts 0.5 of a second, uh, which means that in total, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of these. So it's three seconds for the whole thing. So let's preview that one. So we run the slide. Nothing happens until we press click. And then as soon as we press click, all of those other postcard images come in automatically. There we are. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, of course, if you want to, uh, what you can do is, uh, like I did with this example here, have all the images with no border just flying in to uh, create that uh, complete picture. So very simply, all I'm going to do is select all of these six images here, first of all. Um, and then in the Drawing Tools toolbar, I'm going to choose the Shape Outline and have No Outline. And now once I've done that, it's a simple business to hold control down and simply drag and then rotate each of these images so that bit by bit the complete background is revealed. So just hold down control, click and drag until eventually you've got your entire image visible. Something like that. So there we are, you can see how you can build that picture up. Uh, now in the animations pane, you'll see that we've now got uh, all of those rectangles with the animations. We're copying and pasting, the animation is copied. Uh, so when we play the slide, so click once to start the animation, uh, you can see then all those pictures are flying in. Um, obviously the directions might not be quite right, so you can edit each of these. So if you click on say rectangle nine, now we can have a look at where rectangle nine is. It's the one that's animated here. Uh, and we might say that rectangle nine perhaps might need to come in from the top right instead. So it's coming from the top left. We'll say top right. There we are. That looks a bit more sensible or perhaps from the right. But you can play around with those individual ones. And that's what the uh, animation panel is quite useful for doing. So there we are. That's the uh, postcard effect, the uh, fractured photograph, um, broken up image. I don't know what, what to call it, but there we are. It's a nice effect and I hope that you enjoy that. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, then please do hit the subscribe button. It makes a massive difference. Uh, don't forget to click the little notification bell so that you know when new tutorials are coming out. And if you did like the video, then it would be fantastic if you could leave a like. Uh, and of course, also feel free to leave comments. Um, there's been some fantastic comments on the channel recently. I do read all comments and as soon as I possibly can, I reply to those comments. Um, and to be honest, sometimes it's the comments that keep me going with this channel because uh, some of you are so fantastically generous uh, and grateful and it really, really makes a big difference to me. 
so thank you so much indeed if you have commented on the channel um, and left support it is very much appreciated so please do subscribe um, I do also have a patreon page um, which provides opportunities to see extra videos uh, also you can download the materials that I use in my tutorials so you can actually download the presentations and whatever else it is I make um, and also you get more one-to-one um, -one support. So if you want particular support with something you're working on, um, then I can provide that as well. So head over to patreon.com slash the tech train. So thank you very much indeed for watching and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.